Welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. I'm Peter. And Josie may be joining us. She just texted me. She's not home yet. Which you would think that having four days notice would have given her time to realize that we were doing this today. But here we are. And you won't hear me talking shit about her either because she doesn't listen. Um, so... There is a lot of news to get through, but I came up with a solution yesterday that I think is a good way to just power through it without spending too much time on it. So I got this app for Zoom. It's pretty cool. It's a timer. So I'm going to show you an example. So it's going to pop up on my screen. And then it'll make the noise after it runs out. So what we can do is, and I'm I'm sure that Listeners who are listening to, on a Sunday, a podcast about Lord of the Rings don't know what part of the interruption is on ESPN. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's a huge crossover audience, but it's a show where they basically cover all of sports news that they give a shit about in about a half hour. Really 23 minutes, so it's a, a network show. So in an effort to get through everything, we're going to do a minute on each topic. No more. If we have less, that's fine, too. Um, so I'll just read out the topic, start the timer. If you have any thoughts on it, we can discuss it. Sound good? Yes. That way we can just power through all of this. Um, so let me do this. The second screen will be helpful. Um, okay, so the first topic. Um, you ever played Thomas Was Alone? Nope. Okay, did you ever hear of John Wick Hex video game? That sounds familiar. It got a major uh, release. It was a major console release. Um, the creator of that, Bithel Games, is making a Tron ver- visual novel game. That actually sounds like it could be a good idea because Tron looks so cool. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of fun mechanics in it, like the light bikes and stuff. Mm-hmm. where I think it could make a good video game as long as they don't try to make it too close to the movie. But that's when I think all those video games fall apart, when they, uh, they try to tie it to the plot of a movie. Yeah, I don't think it's going to tie too closely. Um, I They also didn't show anything. It's one of those cinematic reveal trailers that they showed where it's like, we have this coming, that's all we really know. Um, but <laughs> no consoles, no nothing. It's just a, a, the name of the game is Tron Identity. That's all they know. Um, so that is coming at some point in the future. So the next thing, um, they announced a Switch exclusive game, Disney Illusion Island. It's a four player couch co op, Metroidvania with Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy. Um, any thoughts on that? I think Josie will be joining us shortly. Um, no, not really. Just that I have zero desire to probably. I think I've said that the Metroidvania, I hate the title Metroidvania for like a genre because it's like it, if anyone hasn't played Metroid or Castlevania and specifically the old versions of those, it doesn't tell them what the game is. Cause it's like, yeah, it's a very weird reference. It's, it's like a roguelike where it's like a roguelike is just a dungeon crawler. Like, why does it need to be roguelike? It's like no one has played rogue in the last 25 years. So. I don't think you necessarily need to call it a roguelike, but either way, it, it's it's the new style of, of Mickey, like the new cartoon version where it's kind of weird 2D, but it looks kind of different. Um, I'm not going to buy it because um, <laughs> I, I did buy one of the other games on this list. Um, all right. Stop the timer. Okay. Um, next up, uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns has been delayed to December 2nd. Um, that is the XCOM-style strategy game starring the more occult Marvel characters plus the standard Iron Man, Captain America, Spider-Man, all of that. Uh, but also Robbie Ray's Ghost Riders in it, Doctor Strange, all that kind of stuff. Um, that I'll buy. Because it plays like... It's, X, it's XCOM with a card-based combat system and it's just Marvel characters. Oh, okay, yeah. And, and yeah. And the uh, and will that be like independent of the uh, movies too? Oh yeah, yeah. No, um, the Marvel games have all had nothing to do with the movies. 
Um, they're smart. all completely independent and they all do their own thing. Um, I don't think they've done a licensed game since uh, Captain America, the first Avenger in 2011. Um, but yeah, this, this is going to be pretty cool, I think. Um, it's coming for a PS4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X and PC. Um, and I think Josie just joined. Hello. 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 So we're doing, um, we're going through the, the news from D23 before we get into Lord of the Rings. Uh, we're doing a minute on the clock for each thing. So if you have any thoughts on any of the stories I bring up, we're trying to just barrel through it quickly, kind of. So no. a lot. No thoughts. Okay, well, I didn't <laughs> give you anything to give thoughts on. I don't know what you were saying. <laughs> okay. Well enough. <laughs> so, no, th- no, thank you. <laughs> so... So the next story, um, recently they re-released on all major consoles, the Jungle Book, Aladdin, Lion King, which were originally released for Sega Genesis. <laughs> They're adding to that Gargoyles based on the TV show. Um, anyone have any thoughts on that? The, Don't the, all those games, aren't they all horrible? No, they're not bad. They're designed to be very hard. It's actually there's actually a story where Blockbuster partnered with Disney Interactive to make the games intentionally very hard, with the intent that people have to rent them more than once. Hmm. Um, <laughs> so they are notoriously difficult games, and then they're adding gargoyles to the mix. Um, so, no other thoughts. Nope. Okay, and nope. and and Josie, you can't shake your head because this is in video, <laughs> and people can't hear that. Okay, so next, Marvel is going to continue to be on the front of uh, major technological advancement, and they're partnering with Niantic to make a Pokemon Go style AR game. Pokemon Go launched in 2016. In 2018, Niantic launched Harry Potter Wizards Unite, and that was quickly ended in 2020. I think this is a little late, and I think that people aren't going to really attach themselves to this. Yeah, this feels like when they they made that parody show of Lost recently, like eight years after Lost ended. They is it just a kind parody of missed or their or chance. La Brea? No, no, they. I forget what the show is called, but it's like a parody of Lost. Oh, but it's like, it just feels parody one. It just, but it came out like six years after Lost ended. Yeah, I don't know why they what's it called, why they decided on on that. And and the thing is too, I, I played Wizard Unite. Um, it was not fun. Like Pokemon Go had a very simple gameplay loop and it and Pokemon lent itself to that. Well we're, ta- we're out of time, but um the I, I don't think you can do that with Marvel Heroes and have the same kind of impact. Um Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is getting six more DLC packs and is getting a collected edition of all the DLC plus the base game. The DLC packs are all character packs, though. Um, yeah. So, so there's like, adding to, like, the 500 characters? Yeah, and can already the, first, play as. the first pack they announced was based on Obi-Wan, the show on Disney+. Plus. Um, You probably remember back in the day when they put these DLC packs out for the Lego games and you had, like, uh, entire levels to play and it wasn't just, like, a bunch of characters, like, six months after you've already beat the game. And it's like, well, here's more characters you can not play as. And it's like, all right, cool. Um, I feel like it was a waste of time um, for them to do. Um, The next up is... Disney Dreamlight Valley, which is Disney's attempt to do Animal Crossing, is doing a... Uh, they're releasing free content update with Toy Story characters. Um, I've played Dreamlight Valley. I'm not impressed. How um, close is it to Animal Crossing? It's kind of like someone took Animal Crossing and mixed it with um, like Stardew Valley. But it is very <laughs> much just Animal Crossing with... Um, with a Disney reskin. It's it's if you already have Animal Crossing, you have no reason to get this game unless you really love Disney. Because Animal Crossing does all the same things. Hmm. Um but it's you know the the I do like the doing free content updates. I, I, I do always appreciate a company that does free content updates after launch. Um because there is a world in which they release this as DLC and you gotta pay for it. Hmm. Um and I'm happy they're not doing that. 
Um, so the next one is probably the biggest story to come out of the game showcase, and that is Skydance New Media is making a Black Panther Captain America World War II game. No details were given besides the announcement the game is in development, not even a title, no consoles, nothing. Amy Hennig of Uncharted is leading the game, and it'll team up Steve Rogers with T'Challa's grandfather, Azuri. Any thoughts? I guess World War II now is far enough away where it becomes like you can just do anything with it. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting. I like the idea that they're doing something different. Um, and uh, I, I feel like this could be a an interesting new approach to telling this. And, and I do like I did like Uncharted. So seeing her do that could be uh, interesting to see how that changes. What if one of the levels is as you playing as Captain America have to liberate a concentration camp? I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> there is a game, though, on Steam, and it comes up every time they do, like, a Next Fest or a Gamescom or something. It always in the showcase. It's it, The game is literally called Marshall Plan Simulator. <laughs> and it's like, you literally are, it's like, Europe has been bombed to shit because World War II just ended, and you have to... Um, what's it called you have to uh fix it and and like repair everything and i'm like okay that's an odd choice (laughs) um the the this is more of a a gripe that i saw a lot of people griping about and this is the last story for the game showcase uh spider-man 2 the ps5 exclusive wolverine the ps5 exclusive and kingdom hearts 4 were not in the showcase and people were upset about that um, which I'm not surprised at. These are all like, I think Sony has been doing a great job of kind of showcasing their stuff on their own terms. Um, and these games never historically had Disney's showcase of them. Um, and they're all licensed out separately from this. It's not the same licensing deal that you get with other stuff. So it kind of makes sense to me that wouldn't be there. Um, and they also. Uh, they have a very good relationship with Sony right now and they don't want to put it where, you know, they want to let Sony have those themselves. That would be my thought, at least, because I think that Sony is very close to buying Square outright and owning Square Enix. Mm. Which would be big for the industry, I think. Okay. Moving on to the other stories about movies and such. Uh, there was a full trailer for Hocus Pocus 2. Are you Do either of you have any interest in Hocus Pocus 2? Zero. Okay. Oh. But I, I like the first Hocus Pocus. But well, I think probably... have you watched it recently? Uh, no, there's a few movies, uh, there's probably a bunch of movies that uh, I have nostalgia for, but I think if I rewatched them, they would ruin it for me. That yeah. happened to me with the Brave Little Toaster. They live... Oh yeah, uh, I remember that. <laughs> they live right. better in the past. Exactly, and I'll just have that memory of it being good, and I don't need to rewatch it. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's not... I, I haven't seen Hocus Pocus ever. Um, it's, but I it, remember it being good, but I bet it, this new one, it's going to be the exact same plot. This is what happens with every reboot. It's just mm-hmm. the exact same plot again. Yeah. But it's just going to be worse. Yeah, and it's like everyone's older now, so, you know, have fun with that. I, I, I'm, I'm going to watch it, only because, you know, it'll give me something to talk about on uh, for the Smithtown Chronicle, and I don't have to go and watch some other movie I don't care about in a theater. Like, I'd rather sit at home and watch a movie I don't care about than go to a movie theater and watch a movie I don't care about um, if I have to choose. So, yeah. Um, that comes out September 30th. Uh, full trailer was released for Disenchanted. That's coming out on November 24th. Any interest in an Enchanted sequel? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I've also never seen Enchanted. Is that the one with... Uh... Amy Adams. Okay, I never saw that either. Yeah, I was, there's another like comedy fantasy movie with um, Anne Hathaway. I, I forget what that one's called too. Princess Diaries. No, it's like more like magic fantasy. Ella Enchanted. Let's see, I think, I think it's it. that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've never seen the original Enchanted. Josie, did you see the original Enchanted? Yeah. Oh, did you like it? It was okay. It was cute. And are you excited for the sequel? I wouldn't say excited, but I'll probably watch it. <laughs> on, on Disney Plus. You don't have to leave your house. November 24th yeah. on Disney Plus. Nice. Um, so, 
Speaking of Disney Plus, after this week's triumphant uh, release of Pinocchio, we know what next year's live action remake on Disney Plus is going to be. Peter Pan and Wendy is going to Disney Plus next year. Um, I don't think you need to do Peter Pan in live action. I think we've seen enough tries at this to know it doesn't need to work. It, it probably won't work. Yeah, I guess Hook was the last movie with Peter Pan live nope. action, or was there other ones? Pan. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. It was that a one. really shitty one. That was one with Hugh Jackman, right? I think so, but it was one in the mid 2000s. I remember reading about it in Nickelodeon magazine when I was in like uh, middle school. But, I do uh, remember that now. Yeah. Because everyone wears eyeliner. Yes. Um, but that is coming uh, next year. I don't think, uh, I mean, Pinocchio was shit. I did not like Pinocchio. Um, so I don't think I'll like this one. Um, so the next one is Haunted Mansion is still coming to theaters. Haunted Mansion on March 10th of next year stars Rosario Dawson, Tiffany Haddish, Lakeith Stanfield, Dan Levy, Winona Ryder, Danny DeVito, and Owen Wilson. Any I remember the Eddie Murphy one. I never saw that. It I was didn't. pretty good. It was pretty good. It's worth the watch. It's cute. Mm-hmm. I'll probably watch that at some point. That and Tower of Ter- Terror I never saw either. With I saw Tower of Terror. I own Tower of Terror on VHS, actually. I've watched it many times. I That one I've never seen. It's literally all about... it. Like The whole movie is about a haunted hotel, and it just keeps building and building for them to go into the elevator, <laughs> for the elevator to drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... And the then do they die, the or is it not? Is um, it... I think it is like a, that. A lot of the ghosts died from the elevator dropping. It seems like um... a pretty easy solution. You can call <laughs> someone, and they'll fix your elevator for you. Uh, I don't know why they wouldn't, you know, just do that. Well, um... and I never in the movie it was like an abandoned hotel that this dad oh, okay. buys, and of course the mom. Oh, so it's there. not like it's not like the Marriott off the off of the expressway. It's just like you know, it's like an old inn. Um, yeah, like a specific... <laughs> I don't think there's many. It's going to be a Tower of Terror if it was a, a motel. But the no, I think it's a motel, but like we have, we do have hotels that are like four stories, and it's like right off the expressway in a major chain. Yeah, those places probably are more likely for you to die in the elevator, though. Yeah, than like a big fancy hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. The next one they announced is, um, did you ever watch The Lion King and wonder how Mufasa became king? Um, yes. Because if so, you're in luck. Because in 2024, they're releasing Mufasa colon The Lion King in theaters with Timon, Pumbaa, and Rafiki all reprising. I guess they're just immortal because like, I don't think that they have, like, I don't think a, a, a muskrat has a very long like, like a 30 life. year lifespan. Yeah, where it's like they it can be there for the rise and fall of two separate kings. Um Yeah, I'm I'm not thrilled about this. I don't care. And also it's not live action because there's no humans in the movie. It's yeah. it's just it's photorealistic animation. Is it um is the Lion King? It's based off of uh Hamlet. Hamlet yeah. So wouldn't this be like someone making a prequel to Hamlet about yeah about how, how his dad king. became king of Denmark? Yeah. It's like, well, I don't think we necessarily need that. Um, Muskrat's lifespan is three to four years. Yeah. <laughs> so, so even in within... all likelihood, he doesn't live through the events of the Lion King. Yeah. Because Simba ages pretty rapidly in that movie. So I, I mean, and there's that drought that takes an indeterminate amount of time. Um. So, yeah, I, I don't know why that's a, a thing. Uh, and the last of the live-action bullshit is they released a trailer for The Little Mermaid. Um, The live-action Little Mermaid. Uh, predictably, people were not happy. Um, number one, about the live-action aspect of it. Um, because people were complaining about Flounder um, not looking cartoony, which would be weird, I think. Um if Flounder was cartoony. And then the other thing people were complaining about predictably is that ha- um, Halle Bailey is playing, um, uh, what's it called? Is playing Ariel and she is not white. People are not happy about that as to be expected at this point. 
That's coming out May 26th of 2023 in theaters. Um, Any thoughts on Little Mermaid live action besides the fact that it's just going to be shitty because it's not a live action remake? I saw the original, but I have really no nostal- even nostalgia for it. I think so. any nostalgia for me for Little Mermaid was beaten out of me by Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just have nostalgia for the music of it, not necessarily like the story. So Yeah, and the whole movie is not, you know, I, I never was a fan of that movie. Um I don't think even as a kid. Um so I'm not Well, it was a this. princess movie, so you know. Oh well, yeah. Um so for Pixar, Elemental is their next Pixar movie. And I have a feeling there's going to be a groan when I describe what the plot is. That's coming to theaters on June 16th, 2023. It's about Ember, a fire elemental, and Wade, a water elemental, who lives in a city where there are fire, earth, water, and air elementals, and they all work together. And then Wade and Ember discover they have more in common than they thought. Uh. So it's going to be like that shitty movie on Netflix, Purple Hearts, but with fire and water. Honestly, I thought the movie was going to be about the table of elements, and each <laughs> element had its like had its own personality. I I would watch that movie though. That sounds better than than you know this general idea that comes out in theaters in July of next year. July, I guess had it July sixteenth, twenty twenty three. Um, so I'm not I'm not super excited about it. I mean, some of the art looks cool. Like they showed some key art. But I'm not super, you know, pumped about it. It's hard to get pumped about things that you know no- nothing about. Like, if it's not based on something already, it's hard to be like, oh, that looks exciting or something. Like, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, the next one is easy to, to gauge excitement about because it is Inside Out 2. It's coming out summer 2024. The only returning cast member confirmed so far is Amy Poehler. Um, anyone have thoughts on Inside Out 2? No. <laughs> I thought that was a, it was an okay movie, but I don't know. I felt, I think a lot of Pixar movies, everyone just jumps on the bandwagon on like how good they are. Well, I think from up to Inside Out, there was a lot of shitting on Pixar because a lot of them from between those two were not great. And even up isn't great. Like, if you yeah. watch Up, it's like Up has that really solid first five to ten minutes. And then after that, the movie is completely forgettable. For me, I, my biggest issue now with Pixar movies is that they stop making movies for children. They're making movies for adults that used who, to watch who used to like Disney Pixar. and Pixar movies. So they're trying, they always try to cover these, like, look how important this children's movie is instead of just trying to make a fun children's movie. Yeah, like Lightyear wasn't good. I had a, I had a Lightyear. I didn't like at all. Um, I did like Turning Red, but again, I, that may fall into your category where it's like it's trying to be more for adults than it is for kids. Um, and then it's like looking at it now, you're like, oh, this is meant for kids. It's like, well, not really. This is a big fluffy panda, and it doesn't make it for kids. Yeah, like the Toy Story movies are still really good, and like they have emotionality to them. But it doesn't feel like they're trying to cater to the adults in the room. Mm -hmm. And they hold up, too. My mom was flipping through the channels yesterday, and she ended up watching the end of Toy Story because it was airing on Freeform. Mm. And it's like, it it still holds up pretty well. The animation, I mean, look, we can't deny that animation's come a long way in 30 years. But in terms of just, you know, the comedy and all that, it holds up pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um, Next up. Pixar is making its jump to streaming, consensually jumping to streaming, with a limited series called Win or Lose about a middle school baseball team leading up to the big game. Will Forte will be playing the coach, and that is coming out next fall in 2023. Um, They previously Mm -hmm. showed this off at Disney Plus Day last November, um, and now we get that Will Forte has been cast as the coach. Um, It's a cool idea. You'd think if they, with animation, you can do anything, and then they chose to show something that you could 
easily well, show live this, action too. This is um there's a lot of like the kids daydreaming about how important it, like how important the thing is and all of that what's going through the kids' heads. Oh, so, like, when okay. they showed the concept art, there's a lot of abstract more fantastical. stuff like Yeah. Um so it it could be pretty cool. Um but again, I I don't know how I would respond to it as a kid. Um, the only movie that they really talked about that seems like it could have a good audience with children is the last one. Um, Elio is the movie coming out in spring 2024 um, in theaters, and it follows an 11-year-old boy who is brought to space and is assumed to be the ambassador for Earth and hijinks and Sue. Um, that could be cool. Is that a Pixar that's also Pixar, yeah. Uh, okay. Disney Animation only brought one movie with them uh, for next year. Uh, they didn't even bring new footage for the one coming out this year. I think they're not expecting a lot to happen with the one from this year. Um, well, we have one more live action. I had it out of order. Uh, Snow White got confirmed for 2024 um, with Rachel Zegler from, uh, what's it called? From uh, uh, West Side Story as Snow White. Um, Gal Gadot as the evil queen who will be reinterpreted. Uh, Mark Webb of the Amazing Spider-Man directing and Greta Gerwig on the script. Mm. So um, that could be, you know, something. I mean, it's, she's not going to be the evil queen. She's going to be the misunderstood queen or something, but, you know. Yeah, it's going to be bad, I bet. Yeah, I don't have too much. So there's going to be a king that's actually the the reason she's evil. Yeah, it's gonna be like her. Her her father was the king, and her father was like, "You're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly." And then she, yeah. you know, <laughs> and and then here we are with, you know, this movie. Or it's like the mirror was the evil one. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah, the mirror was the one who wanted power, so the mirror was using her, or some bullshit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Wish is the Disney movie they brought with them. Um, that comes out November 2023. That's the 100th anniversary movie because Disney will be turning 100 next year. Ariana DeBose, who is also in West Side Story, is the lead. And it's about the origin of the wishing star. So, I mean, cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that, All right. Is that from something? What else is that from? I mean, what, don't like you the, wishing, wish... the wishing star but don't itself? you? Wish upon any like uh, shooting star. I think stuff. it's the shooting star. I don't think it's. I don't know where that comes from culturally. Um, I guess we'll f- we'll find yeah. out. Well, we'll <laughs> they'll make some bullshit up. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I, I, th- this one looks. This year's looks pretty cool. It looks like a uh, like a nineteen fifties like pulp sci fi, which is why I think it won't do too well. Because like any other time they've tried to do something like that at Disney, it always bombs. Like Treasure Planet, like what? Like bombs, like didn't do well, or like bombs, like sucks as a movie. It bombs and it doesn't do well because like Treasure okay. Planet is a good movie, but that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, like but anytime they try to venture out and do stuff like that, it never works for them okay. financially. Okay. Um. So, Zootopia Plus is coming to Disney Plus this November. Uh, I don't think we need the full minute on this. It is an anthology series uh, about various characters from Zootopia. Anyone care? Because I really don't. Um, Going to create more furries. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about that last week. With something else. What were we talking about last week where we said that's where the furries came from? Space Jam? No. Me and Josie talked about it. I don't remember what it was, but we said it last week. That created a lot of furries. Um, now we're getting into... Space... Yeah, it was Space Jam. No, but we said something else, too. It was more recent than Space Jam. I forgot what it was, though. Oh, my Little um, Pony? Maybe. The, mis- the Mr. Hands video. <laughs> um, <laughs> now we're into the more interesting stuff. Uh, Willow has a new trailer. Willow is still coming in November. Any thoughts on a Willow sequel series? I don't know what Willow is. From, from the, like the, the George Lucas fantasy? Yes. I really I like that movie. I know a lot of people The do. movie's not terrible. I think it just people had a lot higher expectations for it going in. Yeah, because it's George Lucas. Yeah, and it was like Val Kilmer's in it, and, you know, it, it 
I feel like they had another, there was someone else really big attached, and it's like it looked really cool, and then it just wasn't great. Yeah, I think it's just as good as Labyrinth. They 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 occupy the same same space in my head. Yeah, um, but there is a sequel series coming, uh, this November. Um, will Val Kelmer be in it? Probably, I don't think he's going to be, but I think he's referenced in the movie. That makes sense. I'm pretty uh, sure he's dead, so that's all. No, he was in he was in Top Gun. But I think now he's dead. I don't think he's died since Top Gun came out. I think he's dead. I don't. I, I think you're wrong on that. Is Val? I'm just looking it up. Dead. No, he's not dead. Yeah, he's dead to me. Okay. I did. <laughs> I did the same thing to Frank last week. <laughs> About what? No, that person's dead. I don't remember who it was, though. But I was like, no, that person's dead. No, um, they're dead. We googled it, and I was so... wrong. Uh, for Star Wars, Andor got a new trailer. That show starts in two weeks or ten days on Disney Plus, uh, September twenty first. Because if you've ever wondered what happened to Cassie and Andor from Rogue One before Rogue One, here's your uh, uh, opportunity to find out. Yeah, that's um, something I don't. That I don't know why they made. I have zero desire to watch that at all, and I liked I, Rogue One. They they also have like they've done the birth of the rebellion so many times at this point. I don't need to see another show about the birth of the rebellion. Like, I agree. What... There's so much more to that universe. They could go elsewhere. Yeah, like Kenobi was the start of the rebellion. Rebels was the start of, of the rebellion. Um, now this, the Bad Batch, is the start of the rebellion. I mean, yeah. there's an, there's enough telling the story of the start of the rebellion. Yeah, um, I mean that's really all that's ever happening is like starting rebellions and people. Re- like that's the whole Star Wars universe, but they are in frames. And there's usually like other sh- stuff going on. You can go before so. it. You can go after everything. You can go between, you know, like episodes. Like tell the story of what happened between. Like I want to know what happened that led between episode six and episode seven. Like where did everything get fucked up to the point where they're right back to square one when episode seven starts. But then they also have like a uh, host like five planets that are apparently like the government. Yeah. <laughs> like, why was that not for Like, tell those stories. stories. I want to know those stories. Um, this could be interesting though. Uh, Tales from the Jedi, Tales of the Jedi, got a new trailer. It comes out on October twenty sixth. It's an anthology series. Each episode following a different Jedi, including Mace Windu, Count Dooku, Ahsoka, Anakin, Qui-Gon, and for some reason, Yaddle, of all people. Um, so I didn't think she was going to get a whole up. I don't know if she is or not, but she was very heavily featured in the trailer, so I included her in the list. I don't know if she's specifically getting an entire episode, but... I don't know. Um, I have the show could be interesting. I think. Is it all during the Clone Wars? No, some of it's before because, like, the Dooku episode is before he goes back to um, oh, his home planet. Yeah, before he goes back to Sereno, and then like the Qui Gon episode is before he has Obi Wan as an apprentice. Mm. So it's all that kind of era, but like, it could is be it animated. animated? Yes, or animated. live action. Animated oh, in the okay. style of Rebels and uh, uh, Clone Wars. And The Bad Batch, which its uh, season two premiere has been pushed back to January 4th of 2023. So if you're looking forward to more of The Bad Batch, that Don't. is a shame. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. I haven't watched it. I actually meant to watch it, though, because I have Disney Plus now. Oh, I it's... didn't mean that because it was bad. I like it. It's okay. <laughs> if you haven't watched it, don't. But I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the Bad Batch has been pushed back. Um, I still like my theory. That would really piss off a lot of people, and I hope they do it. Um, where I hope that they do uh, Omega, who's a little girl on that show, who is supposed to be the other imperfect clone of Jango Fett, who's Boba Fett's sister do her but 
like have Boba Fett get killed in the show and then make her transition to be a boy and then that's Boba Fett. <laughs> so for the entire original trilogy, Boba Fett's trans. It changes absolutely nothing about the original trilogy, but so many people will get so I pissed think off. That would cause many people to have like an aneurysm and die. <laughs> but the thing is, it changes absolutely nothing. It changes nothing. But people would get oh, so mad. God. Yeah, because it would still be the that. clone of yeah of uh, Django Fett. Right, it's the, and it's the exact same person he's been the entire time. It's just he was a woman before he transitioned. Yeah, there is a disorder where you 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 have XY chromosomes, but you don't have like testosterone receptors to mm-hmm. help, and you look like a woman even though you have male chromosomes. That could also you're work. infertile. That's Nicole Kidman has that disease. No one, very little people know that. Hmm. Um. <laughs> Uh, she faked for... her pregnancy. Oh, just okay. let everyone know. <laughs> um, yeah, I was gonna say, didn't she have a kid at some point? How was she infertile? Um, so she we wore have... a fake pregnancy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she adopted a kid and just the kid. There's there. actual. There's evidence for this if you look it up. <laughs> <laughs> there's evidence if you go find it yourself. Yeah, yeah. There's like pictures of her on the same day. <laughs> <laughs> Where she has no baby bump, and then she's suddenly like six months pregnant. Um. So for Ahsoka, <laughs> back on topic, away from conspiracy theories about Nicole Kidman. <laughs> um. Uh, we got our first look at Natasha Lou Bordizo Bordizo as Sabine in Ahsoka, and Iman Esfandi has joined the series to play Ezra Bridger. And when I texted Peter this, I said Ezra has joined. Um, Ahsoka, and I had to clarify that I meant Ezra Bridger, the Star Wars character, not Ezra Miller, the embattled guy who plays the Flash. Um, yeah, I have no idea who that character is. Yeah, he's the lead of Rebels. He was the oh, one yeah, who I was didn't watch fighting Rebels. Thrawn um, in the finale, and then a space whale took them off God knows where. Mm, space whales, another thing Star Wars copied from Dune. Yes. <laughs> They they just added space whales to uh, No Man's Sky, hmm. so that's pretty cool. Um, any thoughts on Ahsoka? No, okay. No. Uh, skeleton crew was wrapped filming, and they showed an image of Jude Law in the show. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's another. It's another. It's another Disney Plus Star Wars show they're doing. Um, that oh my god! Um, they just throwing everything at the wall. Yeah. Uh, Mandalorian Season 3 got its first official trailer. The show will debut in February 2023. The trailer shows that Bo-Katan is back, um, and it deals with the aftermath of what happened in Book of Boba Fett. Um, We see Mandalore in live action for the first time, and for those who didn't get enough of him in um, Rise of Skywalker, Babu Freak is also going to be in this season. Thank God. Yeah, that little annoying alien dude. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's gonna get a uh, his own time. Um, Indiana Jones Five released a trailer, not online. Um, only for That's... people who are physically there. Uh, oh, okay. very well received by the crowd. Which again, keep in mind it's D twenty three, so it's a, a crowd of people who like this shit already. Um, Wait, Disney owns Indiana Jones now. Yeah, because it was yes. Fox. Oh damn. Yeah. They have the Indiana Jones like display thing there. Yeah, and at Disney World they've had the Indiana Jones experience. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no, they acquired it as part of the acquisition okay. of Lucasfilm, not the acquisition of Fox. Oh. Uh, so they acquired Lucasfilm in 2012. Uh, they acquired Indiana Jones. Um, it's coming out June 30th, 2023, and the director is James Mangold, which I think is probably going to be the saving grace in this movie. With Harrison Ford as Indiana yeah. Jones. It's, and Harrison Ford was very clear this will be my last time playing Indiana Jones. Will Shia LaBeouf be reprising? No, he will not be back. Oh, no. Um, and there was a really nice picture of, uh, they do like a red carpet at D23 because why not? And um, the guy who played Short Round in um, Temple of Doom is going to be in Loki season two. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they reunited on the red carpet. That's fun. So, that was cool. Um, 
And I think that James Mangold's a good choice. He did great with Logan. Um, and I think that if he can, if he did Logan right, I think he can do Indiana Jones five right. That's gonna be basically the same thing about the aging guy who's got to set up the next generation. Mm-hmm. Um, new footage from Black Panther: Wakanda Forever showing that there's also international conflict over Wakanda not sharing its vibranium with the rest of the world. Um, so you got that going for you Um, because there's not enough going on in that movie already. (laughs) Um, They showed footage from Ironheart and Anthony Ramos has been confirmed to be the antagonist. Anthony Ramos, who played um, Hamilton's son in Hamilton and also was the lead in in the Heights. Um, He'll be the bad guy. Uh, Same footage from Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was shown as the footage that was shown at San Diego Comic-Con. Um, with a little extra showing that Randall Park will be reprising as Jimmy Woo. Sure. Um, <laughs> I mean, Kang looks pretty awesome when when they did when when I read the trailer description and the idea that Modoc's gonna be a bad guy, um, and it's gonna be um, what's his name reprising from the first Ant Man as Modoc, um, the guy who played Yellow Jacket, Corey Stoll. Um, because it's like, do you remember at the end of the first Ant Man? He gets sucked into the quantum realm, and his yeah, does thing, he gets all fucked up. Yeah, he doesn't necessarily die. He just yeah, gets like he's gonna be Modoc, um, in that apparently. Um, Werewolf by Night had a trailer and poster. Um, it will feature Werewolf by Night, Elsa Bloodstone, Man Thing. It's coming out on October seventh. I know Peter probably has thoughts on this, but I really like the trailer. Uh, I haven't seen the trailer, but your descriptions of it made me want to watch it. Just oh, I thought I thought has... I sent you the video. Oh no, I didn't see the video. Oh, but that yeah. it's under an hour, and it's like an original thing, and it's by like exists by itself without having to watch. Yeah, I don't think it ties to other products because like there's no Moon Knight in it, there's no Doctor Strange, there's no anything else. It feels like it's gonna be self-contained, and it also has a very like 1950s like horror vibe to it like it's shot in black and white and like it's it looks like mostly practical effects for creature transformations and stuff like that and i feel like it's not gonna be well received by a good amount of modern audiences <laughs> but i feel like i'm gonna love this yeah i looked in at least your description of it sounded interesting so i'll probably watch it and uh and man thing looks pretty cool um they released a trailer for secret invasion um which is gonna be the Fuck this fucking timer. Um, the uh, the the first show in 2023 on Disney Plus with Samuel L. Jackson in the lead, also starring Kobe Smulders, uh, Ben Mendelsohn, both reprising, Don Cheadle reprising, and Martin Freeman reprising, as well as a bunch of other cast members, including Emilia Clark, um, in an undisclosed role. Um, this is going to be based on the comic series, uh, with the scrolls invading and taking over key people across the Marvel universe. Hmm. So any thoughts on secret invasion? No. Okay. Uh, new armor wars logo uh, was revealed because armor wars is still happening with Don Cheadle still in the lead. Walter Goggins is also going to be returning as Sonny Birch from Ant-Man and the Wasp for that movie. Um, Matt Shackman will be directing Fantastic Four, but no casting was given, which is great because that's all people were talking about before. Um, before it's like, oh, we're going to see the cast of Fantastic Four, and they did not reveal the fast the, the cast of Fantastic Four. Um, but Matt Shackman, who did WandaVision, has left Star Trek Four to do Fantastic Four. Um, is that a movie that either of you guys are even interested in? What Fantastic Four? Or Star Trek Four? Oh, I'm interested in Star Trek 4. No, the Fantastic Four. Uh, well, I'm interested in that too. Yeah? You're not? Nope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm alone on that um, Yeah, maybe if it's... I don't know. I'll wait to see how it's uh, received. Well, the thing is, have you watched the one from 2005 recently? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> if... I'll say this about the, the, the first one from 2005. The effects are dated and it's also very much a product of its times. However, if that exact movie was made today and released by Marvel Studios, 
it would have been a hit. And it would have been very well received. The the same way? Well, I'm saying if they if they updated the effects and like maybe did CGI thing instead of practical effects thing, um, and then didn't have a scene in the middle of the movie that was entirely based on extreme sports because that was the thing to do in 2005. Um, but if they released that movie now, it would have been a hit with that with those changes to bring it up to 2022 standards instead of 2005 standards. Because mm-hmm. the the movie works; it's a tight movie and it, it does work. But I I just think that it's a, very much a product of its times. If you're gonna go back and watch it, um, they showed the first footage from Echo, which confirmed Vincent D'Onofrio's return as Kingpin, um, with an eye patch because he got shot in the head last time we saw him, and apparently he only lost an eye from that. So. That's cool. Apparently that's a thing that can happen. You can get shot in the eye. Um, more footage from Loki Season 2, including confirmation that Ki Hui, Ki Hui Kwan is joining the cast. And these are the biggest two stories from that. The full cast of Thunderbolts has been confirmed. Um, Yelena Belova, uh, which is Florence Pugh, Bucky Barnes, Sebastian Stan, John Walker's U.S. agent, who is Wyatt, Wyatt Russell, Ghost, who was from Ant-Man and the Wasp, Hannah John Tamman, uh, Red Guardian, who was David Harbour, and Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, who was Julia Louis-Dreyfus, are all going to be in it, as well as Taskmaster, who is also going to be on the team. Um, it feels very Black Widow heavy. Um, which is weird, because I think Black Widow is the least important of the movies that it came out in Phase 4. Um, but it seems like the majority of the cast is reprising in this movie. Hmm. Um, with the exception of Rachel Weiss is not coming back and Scarlett Johansson is not coming back. Um, hmm. I'm also surprised no Justin Hammer. That's what I was hoping for as like a tech guy. Because uh, I'm always I'm always down for some Sam Rockwell. Oh yeah, I forgot about that he's in the uh, Marvel world, and he's not dead. And they brought him back for that one shot, um, with uh, what's his name, with um, Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley. Yeah. Has anything ever come of that? Yes. Um. In, do you remember? Did you watch that one shot? When he when he gets him out of the jail. Yeah. He yes. when in Shang uh, Shang Chi, he is in um the Mandarin, the real Mandarin's custody. As kind of like a jester because he's pissed at him for pretending to be him. Oh, okay. Um, and then um, Katie and Shang Chi break him out, and they go to not Kun Lun. Mm-hmm. Um, so something, and he's gonna be back, Ben Kingsley for Wonder Man when they do that show. Um, and the other big story is the the full cast for Captain America: New World Order, which is gonna have the return of Danny Ramirez. Um, from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, he'll be the new Falcon. Carl Lumbly will also be back as Isaiah Bradley. Um, they're going to be debuting um, Shira Haz as the Israeli superhero Sabra. And Tim Blake Nelson will be returning finally as the leader after being in The Incredible Hulk in 2008. <laughs> Do you remember? Did you, you watched that movie, right? I think we watched it yeah. at one point. It's like he's the one who he, they, he injects the Hulk blood into his head and it's like he's laying on the ground and he's got like his head he's just growing bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's finally coming back. He'll be the bad guy. He'll be the leader. So that'll be cool. Um, and then a few other short ones. Uh, new trailer for National Treasure Edge of History. Any interest in that series on Disney Plus? Is Nicolas Cage in it? No. Oh. Everyone else is though. Like the annoying friend Riley, he's back. Catherine Zeta Jones is in it. The the FBI guy is back. It's just Nicholas Cage is not back. And not for lack of trying, they just couldn't get the schedule to work. Oh uh, well, no interest. Um Percy Jackson got a new teaser. Uh it's still currently in production. Production will wrap in January and they were gonna be adapting one se- one book per season. So if either of you like Percy Jackson. Nope. Do okay. you? I want to read it, but I haven't. I was not a fan. Are you I tried to read them um, at all. 
My nice. brother loves that shit. Yeah. And he hated the movie. My brother also did. Um, I don't know. It's just, I, it wasn't my thing. I don't know if it was good or not. It was just not my thing, I guess. Um, um, but did you like the uh, like movies that came out from it? Because there was a couple. I, I saw the one movie. I wasn't a huge fan of it. It wasn't great. Kind of like the Aragon movie, which Disney's also doing, but there was no info on that. Hmm. Um, and then finally, they released a trailer for the Santa Clauses, which will be premiering on November sixteenth on Disney Plus. Who's in it? Tim Allen is coming back. The guy who played Bernard is coming back. The guy who played Charlie is coming back. I'll be watching it. Um, And then it's about him getting too old to be Santa Claus and giving up the mantle to Cal Penn. I don't know. I'll watch so it. He has, so does that mean so Cal Penn has to murder him? Yeah, he's got to push him off a roof. Yeah. In the original script, he shot, he yeah. shoots Santa Claus. <laughs> That'd be great. That's how the movie ends. It's just like it's it's like a looper where it's just like he appears and you just have to shoot him in the head. Or they do it like a ritualistic, oh like like murder, eyes wide, eyes wide like, shut. It ends with like an ISIS execution video. Yeah. That movie um, did oh until it was like in the past three years. Yeah, I, I realized so. that the uh, title of that movie is a pun. Yeah, in my entire life, I've been spelling Santa Claus wrong because of that movie. Yes, same. <laughs> um, so I don't know. It'll be cool. I think. Um, I think it gets further proof that the reason why they recast um Tim Allen in Toy Story was not because of his belief he can use the N word whenever he wants because he's not racist. He apparently in his stand up just says says that now. Yeah, I. And it's it's such a weird thing he, to like, be like I can use the N word I'm not racist. And it's like, it. and it's it's the kind of thing where it's like I didn't ask. Like, like it's not like he used it. And it's like, well, you can't say it's like, no, 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 it's okay. I'm not racist. And it's like, well, if you're looking for an excuse to say the N word, then maybe you are. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah. So on to, do we want to go through House of the Dragon or Lord of the Rings first? Um. I don't know. I guess yeah, you can choose. Let's do House of the Dragon because I don't have a ton to talk about with House of the Dragon. Um, okay. And because uh, I, I said it last week, I did not watch the majority of Lord of not Lord of the Rings of uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Um, I caught part of season seven. I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they the you can watch the show without knowing anything about Game of Thrones. It's right. yeah. Pretty well, besides the, work. yeah, besides, besides the names of some of the houses that it's like, oh, that's from this person or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like completely separate. But I, because I, uh, I just recently read the book How uh, Fire and Blood, which is like the history of the Targaryens. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the book is written. It's written as a history textbook, like from, well, technically it's like says George R. R. Martin translated these like accounts or something yeah. and it's very it's like it says just like this happened this happened so that the, it gives the show away and what they can do mm-hmm. and the what the show is they it's like they specifically say no one really knows what happened and there's like three or four main accounts that like all say different things happened so it's on the gospel so they can really yeah. want on the show yeah and, and very close to that and um but what's also funny because I saw, of course, people complaining that it's woke up. Um, a woman be wanting to become, uh, I guess, queen, and then she the whole thing is about her getting passed over for her younger brother, and it, that is what the whole whole book is about. That too, so it's funny that people got mad. That's what they made the show about. Cause that's literally what the book is about. But I loved it. The first episode is a, a forced C section, which was pretty yeah, cool I saw to watch. That, that was something. <laughs> That that does happen in the book, but not as intense. Eyes and then they're like, "Okay, we have to cut the baby out." Well, if it's written like a textbook, I don't think you can write it quite as intense. <laughs> like if it if if, if I, I was reading a text, like, stuff. if I was reading a history textbook and it went into graphic detail about how how Julius Caesar was born, I'd be like, "This feels a little bit extra right now." I don't think I necessarily need all of this information. 
They do go into uh, two noble women get punished by being forced to work in a brothel for like five years. Cool. That happens. That happens later on, though. <laughs> but yeah, the so and that follows the book pretty closely too. Um, but I, I really liked it, and I think the look of the show is great. Like and uh, but I think they do a good job of showing how bleak and like depressing that universe is compared to the Lord of the Rings universe. Right. Uh, and I think they're that, almost opposite. And I think what they're trying to do with Rings of Power doesn't mesh well with that world, but it definitely meshes with the world of Game of Thrones. That's meant to be this, like, depressing, like, almost dystopian, but in a high fantasy setting. Like kind of world, like yeah, where that kind of like, political infighting works. Oh yeah, and this show with the uh, House of the Dragon, finally Matt Smith has been cast in a role where you his like weird head doesn't seem that strange. <laughs> he's, the, he's the product of like, generations like of inbreeding. <laughs> yeah, because he's like fifth or no not like beyond that like many generations just inbreeding has led to him (laughs) he was not bad and he was the only thing that worked about morbius i had no idea he was in that yeah he's the bad guy or the worst guy i guess because morbius isn't a good person um josie do you have thoughts on house of the dragon um it's a a little disappointing (laughs) okay (laughs) Why? Um, I don't know because I wanted it to be better. <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't even feel like um, a game like Game of Thrones. It feels like an entirely different. I don't know production feel quality all that. I they didn't do a very good job on. Like every time I look at their armor, I'm like, that's paper mache, and I can see it. But. I think this actually raises an interesting question. Um, Do you think this show would be as well received if Game of Thrones ended better? Because this show is getting acclaimed right now. But if Game of Thrones ended better, because Game of Thrones, by all accounts, and again, I did not see it, but Game of Thrones, by all accounts, ended very poorly. Um, So if that is, if it ended better, would the show be getting the acclaim that it's getting? Um, I think the audience reaction would probably be even better if uh, people didn't have such a bad taste in their mouth from how the show ended. I think the opposite. I think that because the show ended poorly, it's like lowering the curve a little bit. Mm -hmm. I agree with Adam. Like we expected more from like, okay, they're going to try again. They're going to fix what they did. Where like they like that, like it lowered expectations in a way where it's like, okay, so now because that ended poorly, this is like a step it's kind of like when i mean and again i'm not well versed in game of thrones but like when i saw um crimes of grindelwald this year like i was like well that wasn't terrible because the last one i saw was terrible and Mm -hmm. it it lowered the bar so far that you're like okay well it wasn't as bad as the last one or like jurassic world dominion was not as bad as fallen kingdom so it's like it was better but it's not like, like, but I'm not saying that this is bad. I'm saying that it's like it's the same kind of thing where it's like the previous entry was so bad, or the the mm-hmm. ending of the previous one was so bad that it's it's making it where it's like, well, it's better than that. This is what I liked about Game of Thrones in the first place, and now we're back to that in a sense. Like I heard it I guess described. That's true. Like I heard it described by someone where it's like, you, like you go to a pizza place because you like their pizza, and then it's like, well this is the same pizza that they've made before. So it's more of the same pizza. Mm-hmm. My complaint is only that I feel like they could do more with the wider world. The scope in this feels very small, but they're trying to make it fit into this grander, like this, this grand fighting of high fantasy. They're trying to fit it like this very small scope, but it's only about really the Targaryens. Mm-hmm. And it's like Game of Thrones had these giant battles and all of this stuff, and and that was across all of these families and all of the things that were happening. But now we're kind of condensing it all to just looking at what's happening with one family. And I think that was it the Starks who were no, it wasn't the Starks who referenced was that the Lannisters were in this episode. 
And it's like, oh, okay. So it's like we're we're starting to expand a little bit, but like it, it should be more, I think. Well, this one, it I think they're taking a long time to build it up, but it turns into this like massive, pretty much civil war for the throne at the end because it has to end with someone on the with who was that to end up on the on the throne? Someone from the someone from the Targaryens needs to end up on the on the throne, right? Yeah, it's still Targaryens at the end. Well. In a very short amount of time, three different people take the throne. Right. As will well, probably three, happen three in different England right now. Targaryen. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Charles has long for this world. He should. <laughs> he should just rage quit and then end the monarchy with him as being the last one. Did you see the video, by the way, of him, um, like signing, like at the coronation, and it's like he's been king for like three minutes, and he's already like angry at servants. For not moving things out of his way fast enough. That's funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like I'm I, I'm 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 enjoying the show. I think the show is not terrible. I'm not like and and I, and I will eventually get around to watching Game of Thrones, but I don't know. Um, I I did enjoy it a little bit. Yeah, for I I really liked it actually, but maybe it's because I I guess we can talk about this now. But I hated Rings of Power so yeah. much. I'm not. I had like. I don't have the vitriolic hate that 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 some at the table do. Um, I'm enjoying the show. Um, but also, I am not someone who is as well versed in um, Lord of the Rings. Um, I think last week I said this when we discussed that we we're going to do this. This week I said I have read The Hobbit. I've read Fellowship, and I've read The Two Towers. Um, and I've seen the six movies up until this point. Um, I have not read the Silmarian or Silmar. I don't know how the fuck you pronounce it. I have not read that. Um, I have not read, um, any of the other stuff that Christopher Tolkien has done. Um, that said, it feels like the, like the world feels right, but just what's going on in the world feels just a little bit off. Like they're trying to do more than than they mm-hmm. they should be with this world. Yeah, there's weird. They're doing like time compression stuff, which makes sense because it's a thousands of years across the story. Mm-hmm. But they're trying to like force everything into this like very small timeline, which then it's not going to really make sense in the end because they're like trying to establish the elves at this as these wise, long lived people. But at the same time, they're making these like rash, stupid decisions. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how can they both of these things be true at the same time? Um, I, I feel like the like like and again for me watching the show as someone who doesn't know too much, I feel like it is um what they need to what what they needed to do, I think, was not do Lord of the Rings at Amazon. Yeah. I think that that was the big issue they did, was that this was a, they acquired the rights in the middle of the the high fantasy kind of craze where it's like, you know Warner Brothers had Game of Thrones and then like, someone else had the Shinarita Chronicles and that was doing not terribly for MTV um, like and it seemed like everyone was kind of doing that and then there was like the Spanish Princess which is not fantasy, it's historical fiction but it's still that kind of same period kind of look that was Stars' answer, and all of these networks are trying to do kind of the same thing to kind of get into this arena. And on paper, being like, "Okay, we're going to do Lord of the Rings" is a good idea, but it doesn't mesh if you're going to try and do what these other shows are doing because all of these other shows have a very different world mm-hmm. than Lord of the Rings does. Yes. And Amazon did Wheel of Time too. Right, that, right that's true this. too. They did Wheel of Time. I forgot about that. Which, so uh, far, I've only seen I've seen one episode of Rings of Power, one episode of House of the Dragon, mm-hmm. and uh, I see saw all of the Wheel of Time series, and I like the Wheel of Times better than the Rings of Power. Um, I think for me, the um. What's it called? I think for me the uh, what's it called? I didn't like Wheel of Time as much as I liked this. I'm liking, I'm liking Ring of Power more than Wheel of Time. Yeah, for me, 
the biggest reason why I didn't like watching it is every single scene I was like, wait, this didn't happen. And I look up like what actually happened. And then it just pulls completely pulls me out of the show. Because pretty much zero percent of the show, I would say like ten percent of the show follows the the books because they only have the right they have the same rights as Peter Jackson had for the Lord of the Rings movies. Those mm-hmm. are the rights they also have. So that means they have the appendices at the end of the Return of the King book, which is like a very brief history of like things that happened, mm-hmm. but it, it doesn't details, and they they're not allowed to go into the other to like use those details so i think it was just a failure from the start where they were set up to not make a good show or right. a show that can't follow the actual lore right and and the thing is too there are some references because they do mention the silmarils in the second episode and it's like it's not like they're not mentioning the stuff they just can't accurately follow and i think for for someone and i think the thing is too we have to take into consideration the fact that the show had 25 million people watch the first two episodes, which is, for streaming, huge. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a huge amount of people. That is network TV in the 70s numbers. Yes. Like, that, that it pulled. And and that is a huge amount of, of viewers. Um, the Sil- I'm going to mispronounce it again, please forgive me. Silmarion um, sold a million copies. And I think, to an extent, their thought process is, if we piss off the maybe 2 million people who read the Silmarion but we can pull 25 million watching it that's a net win yes sadly yeah I, I think that that's the thought process that kind of goes into it where it's like look there are people who read this more deeply in the same way that like for me I read all the Star Wars Expanded Universe stuff and a lot of times the stuff in the books um, isn't reflected in the movies and it's like the thought process is okay. A million people read the the books. We're gonna make over a billion on the movie. We don't really need to care about that too much. Mm-hmm. If it, if it gets in the way, we'll just ignore it and move on. Um, and I think that that's kind of what they're doing here. Um, I I and I think and that's why I think I, I think that's why I'm enjoying the show more than you is that I don't have the baggage for lack of a better word of here's the other things that have happened in this world and how it doesn't mesh in properly when it was advertised as this is in continuity with it. Yeah, I think that's the annoying thing is that it was yeah, they've been like trying to trick everyone leading up to this the whole time. Yeah. It just felt felt like they're lying about and, what and the to show be clear is. to be clear, none of the complaints and, and this is for your benefit. None of your complaints have to do with casting. Yeah, that's a hundred percent true. Because with mm-hmm. Wheel of Time as well, I, I actually, except for the last episode where they changed a lot, um, for the most part, I enjoyed Wheel of Time, and that all that had way more, I think, casting uh, mm. changes or discussion. Or and it's like, and and the thing is too, it's like uh, I'm of a weird mind when it comes to the the casting problems, because on one hand, there is a vitriolic hatred that comes with anytime they cast someone who doesn't 100% match what has happened historically in these genres. Yes. Um, because it, we're not going to say that um, like when they cast a black woman to play the Inquisitor on Star Wars, she did not get racist hatred based on the fact that she's black in a Star Wars thing. Same thing goes for I don't know the actor's name who plays uh, the elf in this, or uh, and, or the the woman who plays the dwarf, um, and I, I'm not I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. I'm saying that it definitely does, but and and, and there definitely are concerted efforts by certain groups to review bomb based on that, mm-hmm. but of legitimate criticism. That is, there is legitimate criticism to be had, and it gets lumped in with that as an effort to put it all away and be like, okay, well, if you're criticizing it, you're criticizing because of X, Y, and Z. It's like, well, no, I'm criticizing it because of these other things. Not you're just trying to lump that in with it. Yes, I've even seen like people giving on Reddit and stuff uh, at like very specific critiques of the show, and then people respond to that saying, well, you're just using like 
that's what racists do now is they're using real critiques to hide their racism. So and, that's... And, and there are some things like that. Like uh, one of the things I'm very wary of is the phrase bad writing or the character is written poorly because it's like, well, but it's every necessary. black character is written yeah, poorly. Yeah, it, it just so happens that every <laughs> black character and every woman is written poorly. But like I've seen recently where it's like these complaints are actively harming movies now because like there was a movie that came out on Hulu, The Princess, um, that you probably didn't see because I don't think really anyone saw. But Joey King watched is... it. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Um, it bothered me how often they had to show her getting taught how to fight. When really the movie is just a movie like The Raid. And when we start The Raid, we don't sit here and be like, well, how did he learn how to fight? Yeah, he's like doing like push-ups. Right. Or like John Wick. We don't have a, a, a montage of John Wick learning how to fight or, or learning how to do what he does. It's just he's an assassin. He can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's not an assassin. No, but it, it's also, you know, we don't need to sit here and be like, and here's how she learned how to fight. Like, I don't need to see that. The The point of the movie is... She's captured, she's escaping, she's liberating her family and killing the bad guy. I can't say that I felt like it was a weird thing. I thought it was more of like giving some backstory. Like, why does this pretty princess girl who doesn't, you know, like they don't usually let princesses but the fight. Thing is, they oh, never, but look, they did. She learned it. Like, they never portray okay. her as anything but a violent, like, fighter throughout the entire movie. At no point is she portrayed as she's just a docile. Even in the flashback, she's never portrayed as a docile. Like I'm a princess, I will do whatever I need no, to. No, but she I'm wasn't a, a good. She wasn't a good fighter, though. No, she she fought her way through that building pretty well. Mm, There's a, there yeah. was a substantial body count in that movie. Okay. Um, but uh, like they they spend a lot of time showing how she learned how to fight. But other movies like that, that are that similar, like very simple motivation, very simple. This is just a motivation to get them to kill a lot of people. We don't sit there and have that same, like, here's how they learned how to fight. And it's like, I mean, look at Star Wars. Ray was called a Mary Sue because of Max Landis. But, like, she she was called a Mary Sue. But it's like the opening of seeing her is all the explanation that any other character would need. And she she's a scavenger living in a desert by herself. I don't need an explanation as to how she learned how to fight. That's all explained in that in her living situation. Same with like how does she know how to speak alien languages? It's like because she lives on an alien planet by herself, and she's like twenty years old. She'd have to know that, otherwise she'd be dead. Yeah, but princess wouldn't have had to know that. No, but it, I'm sa- and I'm saying that it's not based on real life either. It's not a historical fiction thing. It it's not a real kingdom. It's a fantasy kingdom. Okay. But I thought it made of, sense. But but I, I'm saying that you don't need to show that, and I feel like the reason why they show that is to immediately quell that criticism that's coming, and it ends up slowing down the runtime. And I feel like what we end up with is. I forgot how we got onto this, but um, the people masking the the poor writing, poor writing as a as a criticism, um, it, it, there are things you can tell, but being like, well, this happened here in this timeline is not one of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, especially because it's not attacking any specific character. Yeah, for me, but going back to the rings of power, right. the like in during this event, um, Galadriel's already been married for thousands of years and has a child, mm-hmm. and that, or maybe even multiple children, and that that's who marries Elrond, and Galadriel is actually Elrond's mother-in-law. Nice, but then there looks like they're for making them having like a weird relationship almost. Yeah, it's just they're trying to force it into the Game of Thrones paradigm. I feel like that's the entire problem here. Mm-hmm. Is that they're they're kind of picking and choosing what, and, and I don't know, maybe with the new rights shakeup that happened, maybe when season two happens, it'll fit a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Like maybe they can like retrofit the show in a little bit better, because now I think all the rights are owned by one company. I really I thought that the Token Estate still owns most of everything. They sold the rights to the Embracer Group, or someone sold the rights to the Embracer Group, and I think now all the rights are under one roof now. Hmm, I'm not a hundred percent on that. Um, but the Embracer Group has very slowly been buying up 
movie studios, video game studios, and rights to movies and books and stuff. Um, so who knows how that actually fits into reality. Um, and I, I and and like I said, I'm not hating the show. I'm not, you know, I'm like, it's the kind of thing where like when there are shows that come out and I need to watch it the day it comes out. Um, this is one that I'm okay waiting till the next day to watch. Like, like when Harley Quinn drops, I watch Harley Quinn probably the same day. Same for like She Hulk and and probably for for Andor, I'll probably do that too. Um, I'm okay waiting for the next day on Rings of Power because I'm not super into it. Mm-hmm. But the show is very pretty, and I'll say that about you know anything like Amazon does very good stuff and it looks very nice, but a lot of it's very shallow. Yes. Yeah, I'll say it has the best establishing shots of almost any show. Yeah, I think that was probably why it worked so well. Was the you know it it, it looks like Lord of the Rings, like, and 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 uh, Wheel of Time looked very good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like Wheel of Time. That's coming um, back in a couple months, I think. I think so. Yeah, I think it's coming in by the end of the year. Um. I have not yeah, we'll see how that goes. To the end of that show, actually, it was pretty bad, and I, I know one of the actors dropped out too. Yeah, that's why at the end of Wheel of Time, the character Matt just awkwardly they didn't have a clip of him leaving the group, mm-hmm. so they just kept replaying uh, a zoom in of him standing in a field while everyone else left, and they're yeah. like scream and they're like screaming at him to come. And he's, it's obviously from like a different scene. He's just kind of like looking off into the. It's like Jeff Garland in the finale of uh, of uh, the Goldbergs. Oh yeah, where it's like it, well, it wasn't weird CGI though. No, but before that, it's not weird CGI. It's just he's a stand. It's a stand-in, mm-hmm. and voiceover from past episodes, <laughs> and he's not facing the camera. It's very strange. Um. The CGI was awful though in that one shot, but they're killing them off between seasons. Um, but I think that uh, I, I I mean, who do you think the guy in the meteor is? I've seen two theories posited. I think it's Gandalf, and then they're using that to be like, oh, this is why Gandalf likes hobbits because we have to explain everything. Yeah. Oh. So they're changing that to Gandalf did not come during the Second Age. Or via Meteor. That's true, too, because they live... <laughs> they just take boats. Because where, where are they go... Superman. Where they go to, which is also wrong, because Gladriel's banned from returning to uh, Valinor. Um, it's, it's just an island. It's not like the special curtain or, of clouds or anything. Mm-hmm. Because uh, this happens later the Numenorians go there and then they set foot upon the island and then everything gets shit like explodes and stuff. Hmm. I, the other theory I heard is that it's Sauron and I, the only reason that I'm lending towards that, the- I'm leaning toward that theory is the music. Yeah, I don't know. It feels like they're, they're very J.J. Abrams-esque where they're just forcing in this... Like, who is this you know, guy? Who, yeah. It's like, um, you probably know who he is. Like, keep guessing. And they, like, the only reason I'm saying is that Bear McCreary did the sound, did the score for this. And he's... Bear McCreary is really good. Um, He did this. He did recently... Yeah, he did the, the Godzilla. Revolution. I thought it was um, going to be a wizard, but not Gandalf. I think if it's it going to was... be... It could be the if it was a blue wizard that'd also be dumb. It's dumb no matter what that it that he <laughs> apparently has no memory or something mm-hmm. like that's mm-hmm. fucking stupid. Unless it is Sauron, I'm trying I guess, but like that's also dumb because it's like why? Because he's there. So why I don't just why go and fuck with the hobbits? Falling for the sake of fucking with meteor. the hobbits. Hmm. Yes, yeah, and all of this stuff. There's they could do it whatever hobbit story they want because they have there's zero mention of them during this time mm-hmm. but i don't think they have i don't know why they're just not calling them hobbits because they are just they are just hobbits i also don't get why they're all so dirty even though they live in like houses and stuff but they apparently can't bathe i thought that was strange <laughs> oh yeah apparently too they migrate 
um, in the most recent episode, spoilers, um, they they talk about how they migrate the Harfoots every once in a while, and if you fuck up, they just leave you behind to die. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> if you're injured and you can't walk, they just leave you. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, bye. <laughs> But not only if you're injured, but like if you fuck up, like they were like with the guy, they're like with the guy of the meteor, and it's like, no, we're gonna leave you behind now. And it's like, all right, like what the fuck? Like they tried to help someone. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the I, I like that the the only reason why I think it's Sauron is because it is they Sauron's theme from the movies. Is sampled in his in in the meteor the the stranger's theme. Yeah, they better come up with a good reason though why these. Are They're not going to. <laughs> I wouldn't hold my breath for that. <laughs> like it, it's just gonna be like he. I don't know. He he. Because then that's gonna be even more stupid. Because the Iran, like one of the reasons why it it turns out like uh, the ring is kind of safe within the Shire with the hobbits is mm-hmm. because Sauron has no idea like what hobbits are and he doesn't under like doesn't even think that it, that's a possibility. Well these aren't hobbits they're Harfoots. Oh yeah they're Harfoots they're a different species from hobbits um is that what it's supposed to be and it's not just hobbits that are yeah. going yes. by a different okay apparently they're that's the, the showrunners have not, but not as a different species, it's just a different family, which they're basically showing because they're not really that different. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the showrunners have been very clear that these are a different like species. That well, I think they, hobbits. I think legally they have to. I think that's more of a we have to differentiate yeah. because it was like when uh they were talking when they were talking about um Age of Ultron and they showed the post credit scene um for the Winter Soldier and they introduced um Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Maybe and... he's who breeds with them that turns them into hobbits. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only woman that they've shown so far is a little girl, I think, so far. So that would be a little questionable at best. We're getting into Game of Thrones ter- territory with that. There's but, a lot of children mm-hmm. getting married in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like uh, Elizabeth Olsen said during the press conference, like, oh, I'm, we're the first mutants. And then they were very like, oh, no, you're not. Because legally they can't say they're mutants, so it's like it's that kind of thing where it's like they have to say these things in press because it's like we don't have the legal right to use the hobbits, so they're not hobbits; they're different. They're a different species. Whatever, move mm-hmm. on. Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but I think I think that's what that's more about, more than like intentionally shitting on something. It's just like, look, we want to use hobbits; we legally can't, but we can use these and just make them look very much like hobbits and you just pretend they're not. Yes. It is funny on the uh, the subreddits that people think Sauron is like everything. Like that that wolf that was in the beginning that looked at the hobbits. People are like, that was Sauron. Oh, or so like, it's, it's, like it's, like, what, <laughs> it's like Mephisto to fucking the Disney Plus stuff where it's mm-hmm. like anytime anyone appears in a Marvel show, it's like, is this Mephisto? Is this mm-hmm. cat Mephisto? Like, yeah. shut the fuck up. Sauron... Sauron and all the wizards are all shapeshifters. They can take on the form of anything. Mm-hmm. So that's that's part of why people think everything in the show is Sauron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think that I think the internet kind of ruined um a good amount of enjoyment of of television because it's like you end up with these ridiculous fan theories and it's like, all right. But like my dad's watching Grey's Anatomy and there are, are boards and stuff about fan theories about Grey's Anatomy and I'm like, I don't think this is really that deep that you need to think about that. Like, I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I, I'm going to keep watching the show, but I wish that, you know, I, I hate this mystery. I think J.J. Abrams also fucked TV because I hate this mystery box bullshit. Just give me a straightforward mm. plot. Like, don't have me sit here and question what it is and then be like, you know, oh, well, we're doing, um, like, oh, what is this? Who could this be? What's this thing? It's like, no, just tell me who it is and let me let them go on an adventure. Like, why can't we just do that anymore? Yeah, I knew they can discover mysteries along the way. Right. Like, the characters and the items that are directly related to the characters don't need to be the mystery. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah. Oh, so. this is, I just rem remembered this that, that I wanted to, is that in the, the first episode of House of the Dragon, they like do directly shit on the end of the Game of Thrones show because at the, the end of the first episode, the, the king is like, oh, you have to learn this prophecy. It's called the Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, and he's like, oh, the he's basically talking about the the long night and everything, and he specifically says like, uh, Targaryen has to be sitting on the Iron Throne for us to win. But in mm -hmm. the TV show, when that happens, that's before Daenerys wins, and it all that happens before she sits on the Iron Throne. So they're directly contradicting the end of the show again. So I think that's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's an interesting kind of like. Uh... And, and and that thing when they said I call it a song of ice and fire, I literally rolled my eyes. I believe that's well. I think in the end of the show, I thought that someone like maybe I just thought this was going to happen. But when uh, Brienne is writing in Jamie's like thing, I thought she closes the book and the book says a song of ice and fire. I don't think that happened either. Yeah. I feel like, like on I the book, I would have commented on that. <laughs> Uh, I maybe I just imagined that because I was just like, how this is the stupidest. Or you're thing mixing it up with my ending of Game of Thrones. Truly, this was yeah. A Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> Which would have been great. Um, I'm sure in the Rings of Power they're gonna they'll say the Rings of Power. Oh yeah, hundred percent. They're not. They're not. If if a ring doesn't appear in this, what would be better? You think them saying these are the Rings of Power? Or the rings not making an appearance at all in the entire first season. <laughs> um, I don't know because they has a uh, Sauron. I forget what his name is, but he takes the form of like a beautiful elf and calls himself the Gift Giver. And then he's who teaches Celebrimborn to make the rings of power. And mm -hmm. I feel like none of that. They no one. No one's come to Celebrimborn yet, right? To like I talk to him so. about making the rings. So it doesn't seem like they're progressing pretty slowly on that yeah. front. And uh, actually making rings. I don't think Sauron. I I, I like the, I like this idea that Sauron's gonna do like what's his name in Phantasm. To to get people to do things for him. Oh, shape shift into a in, woman into <laughs> to have sex. Yeah. And then like surprise, you're gay. It's like well, <laughs> um. I don't know. I'm 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 interested to see where the show goes, and I think I'm the only one here who is. Yeah, if something good happens, I might go back and watch it. But right now, I have no interest to continue watching it because I don't I think, like I don't I like keep watching things. Is that like I don't know what you would consider a good? Where I can be like, oh look, something interesting that's from the book would happen. Like, <laughs> so it's like you're just kind of waiting for the Reddit to be like, oh look, they did something or something really dumb. Yeah, maybe if it gets even more stupid i'll watch it again i don't know like mr science theater 3000 yeah exactly but yeah i really don't like hate watching things so yeah i probably will not watch it i don't think it was a lot because i don't i don't hate watching it. i usually just stop watching it if i don't like it come i'm not gonna bother with because at that point you're wasting your own time exactly <laughs> like my time is wanna, valuable i don't want to make myself angry for no reason it's like i started watching this show the magicians on netflix i gave it like five episodes i'm like fuck this this is awful yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Is there anything else anyone's interested in that's coming out that we didn't address in the Disney Plus aspect of the show? I mean, besides the fact that, like, Warner Brothers has blown up its entire slate, so nothing really is coming out from them anytime soon. Um, apparently, the Twisted Metal show going to Peacock. No interest. Okay. <laughs> No, I never um, played that game. Yeah, Anthony Mackie and Will Forte are in it. Um, I'm trying to think what else is coming. Um, I don't think there's really anything else for the rest of the year. It's a very slow rest of the year, I think. Um, apparently, Barbarian's a Disney movie that came out this weekend. I did want. I might see that. I don't know yet. I have to see how. But it looked interesting. It got pretty good reviews. Um, and I think it's the first of, I would assume, many movies that are horror movies about, like, the share economy. Well, this one, it, see, I don't know if you saw the trailer. I but did. It, it, Months ago. It, once. It, it, it begins that way, but it, uh, 
changes very quickly because it's like weird like portals or other oh i didn't see that there's like weird shit going on that i think i think that's that will just be a very very loose beginning of the airbnb thing and i think that like um i'm also probably mixing it up with like the other two shitty horror movies from this time of year where i like I'm, i have that and it's meshing in my head with smile and the invitation yeah smile and the invitation both looked horrible this this one actually looked pretty good the um i forget there's another bad one that also i think came out um there are those horror movies there are i don't so, oh, the uh, sh- the chef or whatever that looked. Oh horrible. yeah, with Ray Fiennes and uh, Anya Taylor Joy. Now I've, I they they changed the marketing of it. Where now, now they're trying to prom a dark comedy. There's a mm. movie coming out called The Chef. Yeah, yeah. Or the I menu. That. The, the menu. Never mind. It's the called chef, The Menu. The Chef is that John Favreau movie. Yes. Yeah. It's called The Menu, and it's like. This crazy, I guess, like high world class chef that's like weird and controlling of how people eat his food. As I'm watching the movie, I'm like, do you think it's a possibility they're eating human? Yeah, it looks so <laughs> generic. Same with uh, what's the Olivia Wilde movie that just came out with uh, Lawrence? Francis? Oh, don't worry, darling, it's getting panned. Like, I gotta say, I literally, I had no idea what that movie was called. I saw the trailer for it like eight times. Yeah, and. Every time I was like, "This is gonna be so bad," I, and then I, it was so forgetful. The the press tour for this movie has been just fucking wild, though. Like, it's probably more entertaining the movie's gonna end up being, because it's like, um, first it's like apparently Harry Styles was supposed to be Sh- uh, Shia LaBeouf was supposed to play that character, and then he got fired, and then she said, um, Olivia Wilde's like, "Oh no, I fired him." He's like, "No, you didn't. I quit." Because it was too difficult to deal with Flo- with Florence Pugh, and then oh. and then um, he released a clip of Olivia Wilde disparaging that he recorded secretly of her talking <laughs> shit about Florence Pugh, and um, Florence Pugh is already not happy because the marketing for the movie has been all about like her like like there's a good amount of time early on in the production where it's just uh, Harry Styles eating her out was a good amount of the marketing material. And <laughs> Olivia Wilde kept promoting that. And she's like, I'm an actress. I did, like, there's more to this movie than than that. Um, And then it was like, then they go to Venice. And then um, Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine because Harry Styles took the rollover after Shia LaBeouf. And then Harry Styles apparently started his relationship with Olivia Wilde while on set. And that made a lot of people uncomfortable. And it's like you get the most ridiculous things out of this movie in terms of quotes, where it's like they asked Harry Styles, like, "Oh no, I'm not an actor. Um, I I just appear in movies, and I'm an actor in that way." And then it's like she was like, "When you see Florence Pugh, you could be like, wow, she's in this movie." Um, <laughs> <laughs> shit like that. And it's like the entire time, there's like a, a video of Chris Pine just completely dissociated out of his own head, just staring out into space while they're asking him questions. Um, and then the spit happened and, and it's just, and then what happened was now there's a clip circulating of Olivia Wilde saying that anytime a movie is bad, 100% of the blame should go a hundred percent on the director. Oh, and people are like, I wonder if she still believes this now with this movie being what it is. <laughs> yeah. It looked like it was trying way too hard to be like philosophical. Yeah. And like, look how deep it is. And I'm like, oh, like, it's the like, Stepford wives, wives. Yeah, it's like, look how bad society is. It's, it's, it's like, if I can watch your trailer and glean that from your trailer and then your movie not be anything different, you fucked up. Yeah, I think they all fucked up by making it rated R. Is it rated R? I think so, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's rated R. Which I think they're going to lose out on a lot of money because I think there's a, probably a lot of, like probably teens that would go see this movie that can't now. Well, it's like going to hurt them a lot. I don't think it's going to hurt as much as Harley Quinn was hurt by being rated R Mm -hmm. when it should have been rated PG-13. But I don't think there's a ton of good word of mouth about this movie. And I think too, it's like in in the contrast, um, the woman King probably should have been rated R, but it's PG-13. I do have a quick, isn't a woman king a queen? 
Maybe I don't know what the movie is. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm looking at it and I'm like I don't get it. But they did that same thing in in Thor: Love and Thunder where it's King Valkyrie. I'm like this, okay, I guess. Like, sure. Actually, I think maybe I think another two they say Woman King. They might say that. Um, maybe it's just the the term for regent is king, and it's used as a gender neutral. That'd be true too. Um, and it, well, because it's like I think that okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't want to get too deep into Thor: Love and Thunder. I'll get angry again. Um, <laughs> if you want to watch Thor: Love and Thunder, it's on Disney Plus now. Probably gonna watch it. Um. And and don't blame me if you don't like it because it's not very good. Will it make me rage? Because I do like to rage watch. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it'll make you rage. I think it's just going to be more disappointment because it's like after. And the thing is too, I think Ragnarok's just the outlier of what's a good Thor movie. Okay. Um, where it's like I think that we're back to it's 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 the second best Thor movie, but only because the Dark World and the first Thor are not great either mm-hmm. and I think this one is at least I think this one would have been better if it didn't come out three months after Multiverse of Madness which is the exact same movie where you have a sympathetic bad guy who lost a child who um, gets a hold of an ancient evil relic who's using that to wreak havoc and it's like oh I just saw this movie um also, Eternity kind of raises a lot of questions. Like when they, like Eternity's in the movie, and it's like, apparently, Eternity is at the center of the known universe, and you can go to Eternity. If you go there, the first one who gets there gets one wish, and then Eternity goes away. And I'm like, well, why didn't Thanos do that then? Because they know where Eternity is. Like, that would have saved a lot of time. <laughs> like instead of having to go through this fucking smash and grab for an entire movie, he can just go into eternity and, and wishcraft the universe to be gone and then not have it be undone. Um but it's like, yeah, I'm not super. And, and the thing is too, I saw an article, it's like the the only three big releases left this year, uh, two of them are Disney movies, because it's Avatar, um, which I'm sure you're both super excited about. Um Avatar 2, the way. I tell you about Avatar. They're starting production next month on Avatar 4. Uh, some might say that's soon, but that's starting production next month. And um, uh, Wakanda Forever. And there was one other one that's a big one that's still coming out. Oh, Black Adam. And every trailer of Black Adam makes me hate that movie more. <laughs> That's another one I, I have no desire to see. Um, because it's like, and, and the guy who's playing um Hawkman's like, I want to get Hawkman right, and I'm like, all right, so you just get your ass kicked up and down the movie, and you got it right. Congratulations! Like, Hawkman's not a well known character for being a hero in a in a substantial mm-hmm. way where he's meaningful in any mm-hmm. plot. Like mm. I don't think anyone's pro Hawkman in any real sense. Besides, <laughs> besides this guy, apparently he's like, no, Hawkman's like the shit. And I'm like, well, who did you audition for and didn't get that you ended up playing Hawkman? Is my question. <laughs> um, I do like Pierce Brosnan's Doctor Fate, though he looks pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyone else have anything else I want to talk about? No, I don't think so. News, TV Hmm. shows, nothing. We're on the the, it's the and it's good we did this today because the last day of D twenty three is all shit I don't care about, but I know Josie does, so maybe we'll do it next week. Um, it is the Disney stuff, the Disney Park stuff. Um, so the big Disney Park announcements are today. Um, and they're starting those, so like they're gonna show off the the changes to Splash Mountain. Um, I told Josie this last week. Do you know why it's called Splash Mountain, Peter? Because it makes a big splash. No. <laughs> um, it was supposed to be called the Zippity River Run when it was originally pitched and announced, because it's based on Song of the South. Um, and that song is the big one from Song of the South. And 
Zippity um, doodah. Yeah. So the so zippity river on that makes sense. Um, Eisner, who was in charge of Disney at the time, um, wanted to change the name to attempt to promote another movie that was coming out the same year. So he named it Splash Mountain. <laughs> the, the mermaid movie. Yeah. So it's called Splash Mountain because of that. That's a Yeah, so um, I would expect a lot from Disney Parks today because they have to compete with the third park they're opening in Orlando at Universal. Did you hear about that? No. Or uh, At Universal in Orlando, they're opening a third park because they already have the two. They have um, mm-hmm. Universal, and then they also have um, Islands of Adventure. They're opening a third. Islands of Adventure, yes. Yes, they're opening a third that's called <laughs> Epic Universe, and it's got like How to Train Your Dragon. It's got Universal Monsters, and I forgot what the other ones are, in terms of themed areas. Mm. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah. I like Universal better than Disney for the. Me the too. Parks. Yeah, I I think that... I like the the roller coasters. I like the rides better. Yeah, but they uh, so they're they they Disney needs something to compete. They need a big. They need big items, and I and right now they got the Tron roller coaster coming, and they have the the rebrand. Didn't of they Splash open Mountain. the Avatar World and the Star oh, they Wars opened that stuff like ten years ago. The Avatar World. Oh, I wonder if is there, is there a rash of uh, people killing themselves in the Avatar World because of that? People get depressed from watching Avatar because <laughs> they can't live <laughs> in the Avatar. It's like the that is a real thing in Japan. Yeah, <laughs> that was like a real thing that happened when Avatar came out. Is like it gave people clinical depression. Yeah, because they wanted to live in the Avatar world. <laughs> I I don't understand that, but uh, yeah, they're they're doing they're uh, uh, allegedly so far they've announced they're expanding, um, the Avengers campus. But I'm not gonna sit here and wait for them to continue talking about shit. Um, so. Um, this week we're continuing with She-Hulk, um, on Thursday, um, and then also this week is The Woman King, um, for those of you who are out there listening, who want to keep track of the schedule, The Woman King does launch this week, uh, and that'll be the big, the show. oh, and, uh, Clerks 3 on Tuesday, we're going to Clerks 3 on Tuesday, um, so that'll be the next episode, um, so until next episode, have a great rest of your week. Bye.